Siona Gada, I'm Adrian Keen. I am a citizen of the Cherokee Nation and am a postdoctoral fellow here um, at Brown University in the Center for the Study of Race and Ethnicity in America, as well as the Department of Anthropology. I think there are a lot of misperceptions about Native American people and Native American cultures. The biggest ones tend to be that Native peoples are something of the past, that we are something that is not in existence in contemporary society. Most of the images that we see of Native peoples are the historic photographs of um, often Native men um, in traditional regalia and the headdresses that come from Plains communities and um, aren't really representative of the vast diversity of Native America. We have over 565 um, federally recognized tribes and hundreds more um, state recognized and non-federally recognized tribes. And each of these communities has their own language and history and culture and also are in existence today and have um, contemporary communities with complex tribal governments um, and tribal sovereignty and that is just something that's not really represented. Cultural appropriation on its most basic level is the taking of some another culture that is not your own. But the biggest part of that, and that could be anything, that could be cultural markers, that could be religious symbols, that could be spirituality, that could be spiritual practices, whatever it is. And that on a broad level is not necessarily harmful. What happens is that cultural appropriation can't really be separated from systems of power that are already in place. So in the case of um, Native peoples in the U.S., we can't separate cultural appropriation from the history of colonialism. So no matter what, this is the group, the dominant group that's in power taking from a group in a marginalized position. And throughout the history of the United States, everything possible was done to erase Native cultures, um, both uh, physically through wars and through disease. Um, but also culturally through things like government-run boarding schools or policies that specifically prohibited uh, the practice of Native spirituality or um, of our ceremonial practices um, and things like that. And so when there's this long history of us not being able to practice our culture, not being able to um, possess things like eagle feathers or um, sacred objects, and then you see them uh, represented in stores like Urban Outfitters or uh, Target or Walmart or wherever it is. Um, we can't separate it from that long history. So there's a lot of, um, of harm in that because we as Native peoples then don't have the, the power and the control to, um, to represent ourselves. And that is something that is fundamental to determining your identity as a person is the power to um, say what it is that makes you who you are and who you are as a Native person. Okay. I write a blog called Native Appropriations and I've been writing it since late 2009, early 2010. And it started out as a project to document all of the sort of stereotypical imagery of Native peoples that I saw in my everyday life. So everything from food packaging to um, fashion and the sort of tribal trends that are really big um, in fashion today, uh, to Hollywood stereotypes, um, sports mascots, just a place to sort of document it all. Um, and it's really grown into a place where uh, we as a community can have larger conversations about big issues like cultural appropriation, like misrepresentation, um, and a place to have a voice and critique things that are happening every day in popular culture, whether it's Johnny Depp playing Tonto or the football team in Washington um, or bigger issues about what it means to be a contemporary Native person. Um, I use that space to sort of discuss and learn and put these issues out to a larger audience. The subtitle of it is Representations Matter. Um, and that's really what I um, try to push through the blog, is trying to get people to think about that how we represent ourselves, how our communities are represented as Native peoples really have larger effects on the bigger issues in our communities. 
I really hope with this exhibit that the Brown community can come and see some counter representations and some counter narratives of Native peoples um, because the only images that we see are stereotypes or the flip side of that is often invisibility, um, that Native peoples just aren't represented in any sort of facet of, um, of contemporary life. These are not images that people get to see on an everyday basis. So this is a celebration of Native peoples being able to uh, push back on the stereotypical imagery and also um, offer, these artists offer their own interpretations of contemporary Native life and show a side that people often don't see. Um, so the humor and the vibrancy um, and a lot of the um, just excitement of being a Native person, what it means to be Indigenous in the 21st century. I think the tone of the exhibit um, could be one that is very angry. These are issues that are um, very hurtful to our communities that uh, carry a lot of weight and a lot of history and a lot of harm. But I really do think that the overall tone is very playful and very celebratory. Um, I think in the artists we see different interpretations of these issues um, and ways of pushing back on them, whether it's through, um, through humor, whether it's through um, sort of dark humor in the case of Greg Deal, um, or just remixing a lot of these um, stereotypes and themes that we see. Uh, I think it's definitely a tone of, um, of playful humor, of celebration, uh, a way of, of pushing back that isn't necessarily angry or negative, though there's a lot of value in that as well. The five artists that we have represented in this exhibit are Nani Chacon, who is Navajo and Chicana, Greg Deal, who is Pyramid Lake Paiute, Sierra Ed, who is Navajo and also a student here at Brown, Stephen Paul Judd, who is Kiowa and Choctaw, and then Jared Yazzie, who is Navajo. And with these five artists, we really have five different ways of engaging these issues, five different ways of representing contemporary Native cultures, contemporary Native communities. Um, and I think the five of them together really represent a nice uh, diversity of perspectives, diversity of art styles um, to really showcase the, w the ways that artists are engaging um, with these issues, the ways that artists are representing themselves, and I think the group of them together is a really strong representation of that.